Well, what's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I'm back. In these three days that I've been gone, there have been so many juicy new rumors and details about the iPhone 7, 7 Pro, and SE, so I thought, why not, let's squeak out another video right before the event, and I wanted to share some little bits of information with you and say, you know, hello, I'm back. But anyways, uh, let's start off with the iPhone 7. So a new chip has been in the spotlight for the iPhone 7 and 7 Pro, a new partnership with SanDisk for storage memory. So a new 256 gigabyte chip has been eyed by several analysts as being the possible one that's going to be put in the new iPhone 7 Pro. It's rumored that the 256 gigabyte option might be exclusive to the larger iPhone, but some people did say it could be available on the iPhone 7 as well. Regardless, this new chip is actually smaller than SanDisk's current 64 gigabyte chip, so meaning you can even fit more components inside the iPhone, a larger battery even, and it also ties in with the fact that Apple will be making the new iPhone smaller and thinner by up to one millimeter. This is a good step in that direction. You know, a lot of components are getting shrunk down, combined into other chips, and a smaller storage chip would be awesome. This isn't the first time Apple's used SanDisk or had a partnership with them. The iPhone 6 and 6 Plus currently use SanDisk memory. In the past, NAND memory and Hynix have also been used. Now there's no word on what the base storage could be, but I think it's high time Apple went past 16 gigabytes and up to 32 at least. And the roof at 256 is good as 4K takes up a lot more storage. As for other chips, TSMC is set to develop all of the A10 chips for the iPhone and Intel for the new modem chip. And that's it for the storage chip, but there's been a new leak for the battery. There's been word about it in the past, but now we've got actual pictures of the new iPhone 7 battery. Taking a closer look, it has a 7.04 watt per hour battery. Now that's actually bigger than the iPhone 6S and bigger slightly than the iPhone 6. And as you guys know, the battery already shrunk from the iPhone 6 to the 6S, going from 7.01 to 6.61 watt hours. Now this is bigger than both of those, just slightly than the iPhone 6, which suggests the battery will be larger. There's no word on milliamps or anything like that. Uh, but rumor has it there could be a 3100 milliamp battery in the iPhone 7 Pro or Plus lineup. As for the iPhone 7, it's unknown, but that alone for the 7 Pro or 7 Plus is about 12% larger than the 2750 currently available in the 6S Plus. No one would ever complain about a larger battery, of course, so this is great news, unlike removing the headphone jack, but hey, you know, every little piece, every rumor has its place on the new iPhone 7, and I'm more excited about a fast charge sort of feature, maybe even wireless charging. It would be nice, but larger capacity is always welcome too. So there's been another iPhone 7 leak that was making the rounds and uh, it looks very similar to the rumors and concepts all of the fuss going around the iPhone 7 that I talked about in my last video well it was revealed to be the new Mizu Pro 6 it wasn't actually the shell that was leaked for the iPhone 7 earlier it has a very similar antenna design the curvy on the bottom but it doesn't go all the way down slightly above the bottom of the phone so this was debunked and it is no longer a valid rumor so I just thought to throw that in there it was interesting you know when there's so much confusion going around people will use this opportunity to insert their own rumors and all that and this one has obviously been proved fake so another leak that actually leaked at the same time as the previous iPhone 7 images I shared with you and this one depicts something very very interesting it shows the front of the supposed iPhone 7 it ties in with previous rumors by the fact that it doesn't have a uh, headphone jack and the speakers the lightning port they all match up they're in the similar position as the previous case leak so what's interesting about this one one is it has no home button whatsoever on the front which results in a very clean look but as for the validity of this rumor it's you know it's a little iffy it actually came out at the exact same time as the last leak I just didn't pick up on it and uh, you know this one's very doubtful but just want you guys to know that it's out there an iPhone 7 could maybe not have a home button highly unlikely but here it is if it didn't have one what it would look like and while we're at the iPhone 7 and 7 Pro Take a look at these concepts and renders from Martin Hajek. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his last name, but you know, this guy has been very, very good with concepts and renders in the past. I really like his work and this is no exception. He took the mock-up and the renders of the new iPhone 7, 7 Pro, all that, and he put them together into this nice render itself and it looks great. Even better than the one I showed you that could possibly be the iPhone 7 and 7 Pro. The lens is slimmed down a little bit great colors, great attention to detail. Uh, link for that will be down below in the description. Definitely a very talented concept artist. So I thought you should check out those concepts and renders. So moving past the iPhone 7 and 7 Pro 
The register is reporting that in 2018, ARM and TSMC, the chip manufacturers, have a deal to produce new chips for the iPhone 8. This is, you know, way far out there, moving forward by a couple years here. So the benefits of this new seven nanometer production basically mean more efficiency, less space taken up inside of the device, you know, more battery life, less heat produced, all the usual benefits of moving up in a processor. Basically, this partnership is saying that Apple is really looking far out, uh, all the next iPhones and all that. Uh, for some point of reference, the current iPhone 6S uses 14 and 16 nanometer productions. The iPhone 7 coming later this year is supposedly keeping the 16 nanometer production. Now, 10 nanometers could be used in the case that 7 nanometers isn't met, but you know, it's just a rumor saying that an agreement has been made between ARM and TSMC to produce chips for the iPhone 8 in 7 nanometer size. And a quick rumor about the iPhone SE before tomorrow's event. The packaging has been leaked, well, a little bit of it, and it confirms two things. This thing is real, it's going to exist, and it will start at a 16 gigabyte base storage option, which, you know, isn't out of the ordinary. For a smaller device, slightly cheaper, it makes sense. It might actually have 64 and 128 of the 6S, but that's unconfirmed. So, a little packaging leak there, not unusual to see it, you know, a day before the event itself. And the iPhone SE is predicted to be a huge hit, so 15 million units per per year to be sold. It's being reported that this thing is basically going to be a lot better than expected. It'll fill up a huge area where Apple currently doesn't compete in and they'll sell a whole bunch of these just because of the brand name and the quality itself. And I just wanted to talk about why Apple is releasing the SE beyond the fact that we need a smaller phone. Just the fact that Apple actually reported earlier this year that their sales for the iPhone will be slumping for the first time ever. Instead of growing, you know, it's just hard to beat a huge release like the 6 and 6 Plus. Without a huge redesign, the 6S and 6S Plus, they face the slight slump in sales, but basically the iPhone SE for Apple is going to fill in that smaller area in the market where they're not currently competing in, in emerging markets, India in particular, basically cheaper, smaller phones, and Apple has the potential to make a lot of money there. So of course, we need a smaller phone, but there's a lot of financial reasons involved in producing this thing in the first place. And a little recap of tomorrow, we're going to see the iPhone SE, an iPad Pro 9.7 inch, it will have Pro in the name supposedly, new Apple Watch bands, iOS 9.3 possibly. Possibly, and there is even a possibility of new MacBook refresh. Not the Pro or Air lineup, just the MacBook itself. It's long overdue for an update. The processor just isn't cutting it. I've got it right there. Yeah, it's not the fastest, but basically that's it, guys. Just a little update for you on the iPhone 7, 7 Pro, and SE. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Apple event and all the news that will inevitably follow. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day or night. Peace.